Last time on Professor Layton in the Unwound Future. I hate to disappoint you, but it seems you've failed to ensnare the genuine article. Um. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and now back to time travel. Hey, what's up? Rolling back some more Professor Layton in the Unwound Future. The last time we left off. Holy crap! Plot twist bonanza. Um, Evil Layton is actually Dimitri Allen. We were actually playing as Don Paolo the whole time. Well, not the whole time, but the last chapter. And so much stuff. Okay, our heroes divide into two groups to make a successful escape from the Tower and Pagoda. Once outside, Luke, Layton, and Don Paolo discuss Dimitri's ambitions and his dark past. The discussion then turns to Don Paolo and the source of his contempt for Layton. With many other questions answered, our heroes head to the hotel in order to regroup. Except we're not going to do that because we need to, uh... Well, first look at this banana. Because... Luke, do you see what I see? I do. You know the banana skins in the middle of the road. I'll go and pick it up. Hold on, Luke. Why? What's wrong? No, wait. Let me guess. You got another banana puzzle for me? Ho ho! Right you are, my boy. Banana puzzle, banana puzzle, does whatever a puzzle can. Escape, Layton! Go! Ha ha! Boom! Phew! Take that That's puzzle. A <laughs> That's my favorite. Here's something you might not know about bananas. They're one of the fruits that keep ripening even after they're picked. That means that they're green when they're picked. You wouldn't want to eat a green one, though. Probably wouldn't be very nice. These banana skins are all over the place. Do people in the future just love littering or what? I'm starting to wonder. I don't have picture book three yet. Oh my god. Leave Chinatown. I don't want to waste too much time getting back to the hotel, so let's take the train. Sounds good to me. Fine, this is where you part ways. I've got other things to do. You sure you're not running off to formulate some kind of evil plan? Now why would you ever accuse me of that? Truly, I'm wounded. I'm just gonna work on a pet project of mine that I've been meaning to finish. Very well, Paul. Meet up with us later when you're ready. You can find us- Yeah, yeah, Layton, I'm no fool. I'll know where to find you. And now he's gone. Are you sure it's wise to leave him on his own devices? I understand your concern, Luke, but I think we can trust him now. I suppose so, Professor. He must have cared an awful lot for Claire if losing her to you turned him into Don Paolo. He certainly was quite besotted. But enough about that now. We have work to do. Let's get moving. Alright, but I'm still none the wiser as to our next step. Especially now we know future Layton is a fake. Well, in light of these new developments, our first priority is to rescue the Prime Minister. Dimitri fled to fled the power the, the towering pagoda with Mr. Hawks, so we must have so we must have another hideout in the area. And we're going to find it. Oh, but first we need to go to the hotel. That's right. We need to meet Flora and Big Luke at the hotel. Hopefully they got back safely. Okay, let's go do that. Oh God. Train will take us back to Flatstone and Jiffy. Banana. Um. Yes. Let's go here. I do want to go to Granny Riddleton's first, though. You arrived. Bum, bum. Oh, hello, Ch Okay, I didn't want to go that way. Da -da 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 -da. Hmm. Blast, which one is it now? You look quite deep in thought there, Inspector. Have you found any new information on the case? Ah, uh, Lighten, just the man I was looking for. You see, I've uncovered a clue that has simply stopped me. Here, you have a look. The fingerprint. The fingerprint was discovered at the scene as the scene of an unsolved crime scene. Sorry, that was throwing me off. Four suspects have been rounded up and brought into station. Compare the fingerprints of suspects A, B, and C, and D with the same. Okay. That should do the trick. Boom! Yeah, I mean. Well, that's settled. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Saul, so that's okay, he's your culprit. At first glance, B looks like a possible match, but the left print of the scene is a mirror image of the culprit's left finger. Yeah. That's it. Now I just need to track down the fiend who committed this crime. Now, Inspector, aren't you supposed to be searching for the Prime Minister right now? Listen, lad, a man in law can simply ignore one case because he's busy with another. It's every officer's duty to assist and defend the citizens of our fair city. That's our work, even in a place as lawless and overrun with criminal activity as this. Yes, even this den of depravity, I will ensure the spear of Scotland Yard burns bright. Sure, the citizens of this London are very grateful for your efforts, Inspector. Yeah, maybe I'll find some clues to have tracked down the Prime Minister along the way. Doubt it, though. Blah, blah, blah. Wow, you don't say anything new. 
Say, let me get this straight. Dimitri is building a time machine to go back to the past and save Claire. Correct, or at least that's what he said. Funny, he went through every flaw in the pagoda and I didn't see anything like a time machine. Well observed, my boy. Dimitri clearly had a destination in mind when he escaped from the Tower of Pagoda. I think he was heading to another base, perhaps a facility where he conducts his time travel research. Is that why you went looking... Is that what you went looking for when we climbed the Tower of Pagoda with Don Paolo? Yes, in part, anyway. I'll explain everything once we caught up with Flora and Big Luke. Until then, I challenge you to think about the situation on your own. Except, uh, we're not gonna go there. Uh, Professor, the, the thing's that way- I know, you know we have to go at the beginning of every chapter, though. Oh, I know. Granny Riddletons. Can't believe we killed the bee. Oh god, there's so many. Alright. <laughs> Miss Painted Plates. The number of plates Pal Pal Palard ordered have finally arrived. But wait a second, oh no, the manufacturer painted all the numbers on backwards by mistake. Uh, but okay, they'd like to fix it as soon as possible, but it'll apparently take quite a while to fix each and every plate, save time. Uh, that should do the trick. Boom! Alrighty. That Just one is done. as I suspected. Yeah. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Okay, cool. Nice. Oh, milk! That's what it is! Ah, Pale Art Tomato Supreme. Alright, hold on, hold on a second. I, I need to finish this stupid storybook because I think this actually finishes it off. There we go. Oh boy. That was actually a little tough trying to find out everything, but we got it now once and for all. Let me read you a story time, guys. Let me reel into it. I work in a cafe a little way out of town. One day, Auntie Lil, Auntie Lil? I don't know. Auntie Lil had to go out for a bit and left me in charge. On the way out, Auntie Lil said, I'm counting on you today. I'll be back as soon as I can. After seeing Auntie Lil off, I noticed that a raincoat had been left behind the counter. Oh no, I thought. I don't even know where Auntie Lil's gone. I forgot to ask. A little while later, an old man arrived, the first customer of the day. What awful rain. I'll have a coffee, please. Make it piping hot, said the customer, taking a window seat. I looked outside and saw that it indeed started raining. The door flew open once again, and I could hear the sound of the rain on the pavement as the next person came in. Burr, just as they forecasted, that rain has been that has chilled me to the bone. I'll have a tea, please. With that, the boy walked over to the corner seat. Auntie Lil wasn't back yet, so I set to work on making a hot coffee for the first customer, customer and the tea that the customer in the corner had ordered. Oh no, I thought, I can't find the milk. I The door opened again and someone stepped inside. Thank goodness, it must be Auntie Lil, I thought. But when I turned around, I actually saw that it was an adventurer. A regular at the cafe he came and sit at the counter as usual. Oof, I'm tired, but look at this mushroom I found. Lucky or what? What was that? Oh right, my order. I'll have a cocoa, please. The adventurer leaned over, placed the mushroom on the counter, and said, Isn't it a beauty? Certainly is, however, I'm afraid I can't make you a cocoa. There's no milk, you see, I said, de deciding I had to be up front. Overhearing my apology, the mustachioed man by the window said, Oh, I, but I don't like plain coffee. One needs a dash of milk to make it palatable. The boy sitting in the corner piped up. Proper English tea can't be served without milk. Then the adventure by the counter joined in, glaring from steamed up glasses. This is unbelievable. I came all the way here to enjoy a nice cup of cocoa. I was getting very flustered. Or frustrated, I'm not sure. Just then, the door opened again and in stepped Auntie Lil. Lots of customers today, eh? Glad you all came in here out of the rain. I was very relieved to see Auntie Lil's pointy hat. I can't find the milk, I cried. I've looked everywhere. Auntie Lil's eyes went as round as saucers. What are you talking about? Didn't you hear when I told you I was going to get more milk? The old dear was rather cross, but she wasted no time making everyone hot drinks and set to baking a mushroom pie. The customers were all delighted, and even I was able to relax a bit. Didn't this story want to make you visit a cafe on a rainy day as well? We did it! Woo! Alright, I have no idea about this one, so we're not even gonna... Let's not even try that one. Alright. Let's do some some of these. Do do. Aw oh, yeah, boys. That's what I'm talking about. Really? Just in time. Cheers for the fella. I owe you one. Ah! And one terrain to turn to Mayo Supreme, the secret ingredient is chickpeas. Wanna try some? Tomorrow. You've earned this person's gratitude with your expert delivery skills. Dang right. Only five more, boys. We're that close. Next one. Pork noodle lineup. 
Bowls of plain noodles and pork noodles are lined up in a row on the counter. With the minimum of fuss, line up the bowls so that the bowls of plain noodles and the pork noodles alternate along the counter. Which is the lowest number of moves it takes to accomplish this task? Note that in this puzzle, simply switching the, the places of two bowls counts as two moves. This one's as good as solved. Boom! Yeah, I was gonna say, that's kinda obvious, no isn't it? Puzzle can stop now puzzle can stop me. Just move one. The chef in the illustration probably get angry. His colleague has been too long and the news got cold. Nice. The third youngest. Let's solve these puzzles for real. Ten close brothers and sisters live together. Now, Luke, let's imagine that you're the eighth child. The oldest daughter is the second son's younger sister and the third son's older sister. The fourth son is the second daughter's older brother and the oldest daughter's younger brother. There are... Are no boys in between the third and fourth daughters? Is the third child from the bottom a boy or a girl? I can't tell this from looking at this. Let's tell Luke the answer in secret. This one's as good as solved. Boom! I did it. That's right, it's a boy. I told you at the beginning. Luke, let's imagine that you're the eighth child. My question was asking from the third child from the bottom. In other words, the eighth oldest child. That eighth child was you, Luke, and I know better than anyone that you're a boy. Da, 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 da. Around the table. Around the table. One day, King Arthur invited a number of honored guests to dine at the round table. At his request, everyone sat at the evenly spaced intervals around the table. After sitting down, two ladies in attendance, uh, Guinevere and, Nim and Nimu, N Nimui, I don't know, <laughs> were amused to find that neither of them had a woman sitting directly adjacent or opposite. What's the minimum number of people that were sitting at the round table? Do. Do, hmm. do, do. How about this? Boom! Shows you in the picture. I knew it. No, you did it. Alrighty. Congratulations. Helping Maya. Alright, let's do that. Nice! You did it, boy. Alrighty. Phew, I mean, that's a lot. Thanks, real parent. Ah, the lot! Ah, the lot! I mean, like watching tiny customers rattling through well-ordered bookshelves. Books! You've earned this person's gratitude with your expert delivery skills. <laughs> I don't know why every time that just is like, that's so ridiculous. Okay. Back to this. Flower power! Diddly-oo. To be prepared in case of future shortages, you've decided to mill some of your grain into flour and stash it into flour and stash it away somewhere safe and dry. You've rustled up three different boxes that are suitable for storage. Which of the containers will store the most flour? Here's my answer. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. I knew it. Oh, what is going on? Sweet! Box A is correct. If you store the most flour, you will store the most flour if you turn it upside down. Do, do, do. A tidy bookshelf. A tidy bookshelf. Arrange these books on equal thickness of the shelf according to the rules below. There are no books to the left of the brown one. The, only the blue book touches the brown one. The yellow is to the left of the white one. The blue book touches the purple one. The white book is sandwiched between the yellow and purple books, but touches no other. What? Oh, there's an empty space for one book next to the yellow one. Here's my answer. Boom! No puzzle can stop Layton's apprentice. Yeah, that's nice, Luke. Alrighty. Okay, well, that's it for uh, all of our leftover puzzles. I'm about 30 minutes into this video, but it's fine. Da -da. Oh, I need to talk to some people. Uh, I have no idea where Barton is, though. God dang it. Uh, I know where Becky is, though, so that's nice, at least. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, if worse comes to worse, we can just do it all at the end, but... Yeah, there we go. Oh, hi there, Becky. On your way out? That's right. The only gentleman who's staying with us asked me to run an errand for him. I mean, D Dean Del Lona? Yeah, it's a chap. I don't know why he needs to have a jail for such a little tough to hair, though. Joe? You mean for styling hair? Strange, eh? Can't blame me for trying to stay stylish in his old age, huh? Well, he clearly pays a lot of attention to his personal appearance. I thought he's still on the subject. Huh. So I wonder, does that change? Could that only appear now? Or is that like a little subtle hint if you did it when you're supposed to? I bought a pen from a shop which had 10% off the original price of $30. When my friend caught sight of it, she decided she had to pay for it herself. She offered to pay 10% more than the price I had bought, bought it for, so I agreed to sell it. Overall, how much did I gain or lose? 
Let's see if I've got this right. Boom! Few things satisfy like, like a, a puzzle, puzzle solved. solved. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, okay. Like a boss. I need to work it out, Professor. I had a question for Mr. Delmoni, you know, but he disappeared when I wasn't looking. Oh well. Hey, don't tell Mr. Mona I was wondering about his hair gel, okay? I think we even something to keep the matter hush hush. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, well, that makes sense. Don Paolo is posing as Dean Delmona. The hand gel is for Don Paolo. Precisely. Of course, he did away with that disguise once I persuaded him to assist us. Yeah, you can't imagine how shocked I was to see Don Paolo step out of that latent disguise. Haha, <laughs> that's life for you, Luke. You never know what surprises are waiting around the corner. Let's be off. Alrighty. Let's do that course real quick. Alrighty, I think I got it. Nice. Yeah. Alright, let's see if I can go get Barton's real quick. Ah, uh, okay, Barton's back there, so... Yeah, I think we'll get that later. Since I don't really want to go all the way there. Let's just go up here. Professor, hello, welcome back. I'm so glad you're both safe. Good to see you too, Flora. God, this game is getting laggy right now. I trust you didn't have too much trouble getting out of the pagoda. I don't know, Big Luke was kind enough to lead the way for me. Speaking of Big Luke, where well, is he? Oh, when we got back here, a man with a mustache was waiting in the lobby. A man with a mustache? Was he dressed in black? Yes, that's right, he had a black uniform. Sounds like Shipley to me. Whoever he was, he walked straight up to Luke and started talking all fast and furious. At some point in the conversation, Luke started looking worried and said, <sighs> Uh-oh. Flora, some very important business has come up and I need to take care of it immediately. Please tell the press and continue his investigation without me for now. Uh oh, that sounds fishy. Did he tell you where I was going? No, we did promise he would join us again later. I think we'll keep more perceptive than I thought. He seems to know exactly what our next move will be. Professor, is something the matter? I'm just thinking back to what happened earlier. Do you remember who first told us that we had traveled into the future? Now yeah, that'd be Big Luke, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right. Oh no, he is evil. You visitor, Professor. Oh, who can that be, I wonder? Pardon oh, this unintrusion, Leighton. Inspector Chelme! What could I do for you, Inspector? Something I saw running around town has been preying on my mind. Hmm, I don't know how to say this. I'm afraid it might sound a bit ridiculous. Not at all, Inspector. Please continue. Well, it's just. I could be mistaken, but I'm quite sure of what I saw. You remember our discussion about the explosion at the Institute of Polydimensional Research? Well, a few minutes ago, I spotted a woman who looked exactly like one of the blast victims. Oh my gosh, you're talking about Claire, aren't you? And you know why, I'm so... Yes, Inspector, you're not alone. We've seen her as well. The resemblance to Claire is striking, but it's coincidental. It has to be. Yes, I suppose you must be right. I wasn't thinking straight. There's bound to be a logical explanation for it. If the similarity isn't coincidental, this woman could be a relative of Claire's. A cousin, perhaps. That will make sense. I'll check Claire's file and see if I can find more about her family. By the by, you haven't seen Barton any around here, have you? Constable Barton? Nope, you can't say that I have, sir. I swear, he'd have been kicked off the forces years ago if, I'd, if he didn't have me looking out for him. Of course, I am fond of the fellow and will go out looking for him. But still! Anyway, if you see Barton, tell him his commanding officer is looking for him. Good day. So where's our adventure taking us next, Professor? This isn't an adventure, Flora. It's an investigation. Can't you try to take it more seriously? I'm taking it very seriously, Luke. I was just excited, that's all. Not all of us get to go on these kinds of... I mean, investigations all the time. Plus, you, gotta be out, you get to be out with the Professor day in, day out. Well, yeah. I suppose the Professor and I all are always together. Well, I'm glad to see you're enthusiastic, Flora. The three of us will get to the bottom of this case together. Now let's move on. Oh, heading out again already. That's right. By the way, Becky, I was wondering if there's somewhere nearby where we can cross the river. There's a bridge, but it's quite a long way out beyond Chinatown. Oh, excuse me, I got enough here to try and cross the river. Granny, I didn't realize you were awake. There used to be a tunnel that would take you across. We're right on a river and people could just walk through the other side. Wow, a tunnel in the river sounds amazing. Unfortunately, once the family gained control of the city, they shut down the tunnel. 
Crafton might still know how to get in now. Crafton? Don't you know him? Easy to spot with those bushy eyebrows, blue hat, and scheming smile. Ah, yes. We go back a long way. Spend most of the time down in the black market these days. Oh, uh, yes, I do believe we met this friend of yours. You remember him, don't you, Luke? Luke? Hmm? Where'd he go? Uh-oh. He was just here a moment ago. Oh, are you looking for little Luke? I saw him leaving. By himself? Where could he possibly be going? Please excuse me, madam, but I have to go and find Luke. Thank you for directing us to Grafton. No, no, we at the Hotel Duke are always lying to assist our guests. Oh, no. Oh, Luke, why? No, no. I'm worried, Professor. Where could Luke have run off to? I don't know, but I share your concern. It's unlike Luke to take off without so much as a word. Maybe he decided to go on a secret mission of his own, like you did when we went to the Tower of Pagona. <laughs> Whatever his reasons, you shouldn't be out there alone. You need to find him. Ah. Uh, have you seen Luke? Hey, what's wrong? You look all worried. Hello there, young lady. You've seen a boy come out of the hotel recently. Oh, the boy in blue? Yeah, I saw him come out, but I don't remember which way he went. Sorry. That's quite alright. You've been most helpful. Can you have a puzzle for me? You better have a good reason for talking to me. Sorry to bother you, but you've seen the young boy I've been traveling with. The knobby key- the knobby knees squirt in the blue hat? Uh, yes, that would be him. Yeah, I saw him go by. Did you happen to see in which direction he went? I uh, suppose I could tell you, but not for free. Scratch my back and I'll scratch yours, okay? The Hen Clucky Derby. Alright. Somebody's been ranching chicken. Look like it was a photo finished because the photo's been torn to pieces. You need to work out which chicken came in seven place. Circle the correct answer. Gotta say, these puzzles are not that great. Like, these picture puzzles, I'm not a fan of them. Let's see if I've got this right. Boom! That's what I'm talking about, boys. Well, that's settled. Well, that's settled. Right you are. Chicken eat collect in seventh place. Ah, oh, feels good to finally wash my hands of that puzzle. So about that small friend of yours. Lad came and walked off toward Flatstone Street. Had the glumous expression on his face. Flatstone. That's this way, right? Ah, oh, so you haven't seen Luke either, okay. There she goes. You're the worst character in this game. Hello, good boy. What can I do for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, madam. Have you seen the boys been traveling with me go by, have you? Don't you about in a blue hat, is it? Yeah, so I'm going to flash screen. Didn't seem lost. Okay. That's not worry. I'm sure we'll be fine. Okay. Where the heck did he go? Oh, stop talking about the breeze, for the love of God. Hmm? What is it now, Leighton? Inspector, have you seen Luke? He slipped off on his own a few moments ago. Hmm. Strange. Well, he's not taking the train, or would have seen him. That much I can say for sure. I see. Then he must have headed towards the river. Thought that boy was joined to you at the hip. Well, I suppose every hatchling has to spread their wings one day. Yes, well, I'm just a bit concerned as to where he's flown off to. I know the feeling. Bond gets me fretting over him twice a week at the very least. Luke's a fair bit tougher than Bond, though, so I wouldn't worry yourself. He'll turn up. Just the same, if you happen. Just the same. If you happen to see Luke, please let him know I'm looking for him. We'll do later. Charlie's so cool, dude. Oh, what do you want? Please don't hurt me! I simply wish to ask you a question, sir. No need for theatrics. Well, alright. The young fellow I've been traveling with, have you seen him around here, anywhere? You mean the one with the blue hat and the p, p piercing stare? I don't really describe his stare as piercing, but yes, I think we're talking about the same boy. I haven't seen him around here. Is he lost? Either lost or wandering, I'm not quite sure yet. It will keep you from hunting me down. I h hope you find him soon. Uh, thank you. So wait, he didn't go this way? God dang it. Alright. Uh, okay, maybe he did go to the observatory then. Maybe this way? There he is. Oh. Luke, there you are. Oh, hi, Professor. I see you've gone off for a stroll. May I join you? Of course. I I'm sorry for running off. I was just, well, I was just thinking. We've had so much fun these last few years, and I've become so used to going everywhere together. Of course you have. After all, we're the best of friends. It's only natural we'd spend time together. But, but, Dad told me the other day he's been, he's being transferred. 
I'll be moving away. Ah, oh, yes. Your father mentioned that to me as well. Now tell me, Luke, do you believe that we're true friends? Of course I do. How can you even ask that? Good. Then there's no need to worry. True friends, you see, share a special connection. This connection endures no matter how far apart they may be in the world. Distance and time apart cannot break the bonds formed by a true friendship. Do you see? I, I think I do, Professor. Excellent. Let's get back to our investigation. We've got many mysteries to solve. Let's go, Professor. Ho oh, ho, good to see you back in high spirits, my boy. Now tell me, can you guess where we're headed next? I've been thinking about it, and I'm sure Dimitri fled to the place where he's building the time machine. The question is where? We already know that the research lab isn't in the Tower in Pagoda. That's right. So let's review all the clues we've gathered in our investigation in this London. Has anything else we've seen around the city struck you as suspicious? Oh, what about the men in white coats we bumped into? Yeah, those are lab coats, no doubt about it. Perhaps those men are involved in Dimitri's research. Excellent. Well, let's think carefully. We've met several men in lab coats around this London. Other than their garb, what else did all these men have in common? Uh, oh, of course! I see. So is it is it underwater? They all had wet shoes! So they must have walked through a very wet area. What could that be? <laughs> uh, the walk across the river? I don't know. The River Thames. Then they came to this part of town through the tunnel under the river. Oh! Um, Flora, what tunnel under the river? I asked the lady downtown how to get across the river and she told us about this tunnel. Wow. Yes, we've met quite a few scientists during our time here. Though they haven't been very forthcoming with details, it's clear where they've been coming from. My suspicion is that these men work at a research facility located near the river. They probably come into town to refresh themselves after long hours of research. You know this the whole time, Professor? It's been a working theory for a while, yes. After all, who goes around in soggy shoes? We've seen too many men walking about like that for me to write the whole thing off as a coincidence. I therefore believe that this research facility is somewhere on the other side of the river. Amazing! I clearly still got a long way to go for I can reason as well as you do, Professor. Alright, everyone. We're going back to the Black Market Bazaar. Why there? We're trying to get across the river. Shouldn't we head back to the riverside area? I'm sure we'll be going there eventually. First, we have to talk to that man at the bazaar with the eyebrows. Grafton, I think. Okay, if you say so. You there, who's the big I won't tell you. Really? What is it? I just cooked an amazing pillow so I don't break your brain. The cake gobbler. Oh no, the cake gobbler! Hey, somebody ate my piece of cake. I was saving that for later. I didn't eat it. Neither A nor D ate it. I didn't eat I didn't eat it either. C is telling the truth. Somebody isn't telling the truth, and that person is a cake gobbler. Who isn't? Circle a person and touch submit. Oh, I get it. It's this guy. I see. Here's my answer. Boom! Phew! That's a relief. Yeah, somebody went to cake with me. I was, I was saving, I wasn't saving ever later at all. Thinking logically, once you realize A, B, C, and D are telling the truth, the person who's lying must be the one who originally complied. Dude. Alright, jab, 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 jab. Oh, he's ball. Uh. Okay, where's that? Well done. That's it. That's my ball. Blah blah blah. You've earned this person's gratitude. Only three more. Uh, okay, I need to go to... Yeah, there he is. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Hello, Barton. How's everything going? I was just taking a break to him. Reflect upon a case the inspector and I were on the other day. I see. What exactly happened on that case? We had to chase suspect across the river, but I can't remember how long it took him. Four across the river. Four police officers, A, B, C, and D, are chasing after a criminal across the river. However, their boat only holds two people, so they can't all cross at once. It takes one minute for a police officer to roll across, but after the first crossing gets tired, so the second crossing takes two minutes, the third crossing takes three minutes, and so on. What's the minimum number of minutes it would take for all four officers to cross the river? Too long, that's for sure. Let's see if I've got this right. Oh. Well, that's settled. You did it, boy! Okay. <laughs> dun, 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 oh, yes, that's right. The trail being remembered. Now I'm falling back to snacking. Patrol route. Alrighty. Alright, well, this one's actually pretty easy. <laughs> Do that. Boom. 
Nice! You've completed con patrol route. Alrighty. Only two left. <sighs> well, I guess we're not getting that last one from future Layton then. Oh, that kind of sucks. Um, you have a puzzle for me, right? You have two, actually. Oh, the Pepper's Noodle Palace. Hello there, Pepper. Hey, big hello there to you too, Jen. Thanks for stopping by again. Hungry already, are you? I'm still quite full, actually. But you know one police officer who never turned down a, a bowl of noodles, though? I guess from his favorite thing, I'll train a ball in the house, blah, blah, blah. Puzzles aren't bad either. Noodling around. Oh. <laughs> one once again. This one's as good as solved. Boom! That's like the Phew. same as that one puzzle That's I did. That's a relief. That's right. Nice work there. Watch. Oh, maybe that's what I need. Oh, thought you had another puzzle for me. All right. Does it matter? I was supposed to go my friends. I don't know where it is. Interesting. Makes so much sense. All right. Uh, first knock on a certain door, then knock on the door below it, then the door below that. Finally, touch your friend's door to open it. Let's see if I've got this right. But, yeah, that's the only one it could be. Well, that's settled. Well, that's settled. Even though you don't know which certain door your friend is initially referring to, the only door from which you can move two down, two to the right, is the top left door. The only possible location of your friend's pad is therefore to the bottom right. You dummy. So you follow the researcher, huh? That's nice. Uh, interesting. Except it's not. I don't care. What have to say, dude? Nothing important. Oh, God. Oh, Mr. Gentleman. Hello there. You're just the people I need. Why? What's up? God, I'm a bit stuck, you see. What do you mean? I got this puzzle in my hand. The puzzle, you say? I got it! A puzzle? I love puzzles. Alrighty. Of course, the research father discovered a significant number and noted in paper on a slip. Fortunately, someone took the snow for rubbish, tore in a piece of note. Father, perhaps you can work out what the number is by piecing the note back together. Uh, maybe I can do that. Possibly. Don't tell me I can turn these, please. Okay, thank you. Hmm. How about this? Phew! That's a relief. Jolly good. It's no trouble. Butler. Ah. God dang, everybody has a puzzle for me. Here's my answer. I knew it. I knew it. <sighs> okay. You done? Alrighty. There he is. Oh, why do you have a puzzle? Hello, Grafton. Oh, that's the first time someone called me my real name in ages. Where'd you hear it? The proprietress of the hotel informed us of your name. Ah, uh, dear old Maggie, she's been quite fierce, but underneath it all, she's a good egg. Anyway, what can I do for you? We're trying to find a way across the river. We were told you might be able to help us. Ever tried jumping? I must admit, that's an option we've never considered. Heh, <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. Well, there's a couple of boats that leave from outside the Thames Arms. They're, those are just for those family folks to use, mind. I was told you knew of another way across. Ah, so Meg laid it all out for you, did she? More or less. <laughs> Alright then. But things are pretty rough across the river. If you're set on heading there, I need to make it... I need to at least make sure you've got the brains to get across. Three blocks. Alrighty. Move the three colored blocks in their respective spaces. Touch the arrow at the bottom. Oh, okay. So this is just before. All three blocks must be placed in order. Okay. There we go. That's I've got a good lot more. About I this messed one. up, but that's fine. Well, that's settled. Amazing, alright. 
All right, I see you down by the riverside. There's a door that leads to the tunnel of the river. The door's locked out of the bank safe, but here's the thing. There's a way to open it. Go on. Of course, not a button or anything that's straightforward. It's a fancy code to lock. As soon as you saw me pause, I reckon you might have what it takes to break the code. Oh my god, even the cat. I don't know, is there any trouble you again? Well, oh it is some puzzle. Oh my goodness. Dog, dog, cat, whatever. Okay, blah, blah. Who even cares? There are some usual occasions. 0 plus 1 equals dog. 0 plus 2 equals cat. 6 plus 3 equals dog. 6 plus 7 equals dog dog. 7 plus 9 equals dog cat. 11 plus 12 equals cat dog. What? I... Hmm. How about this? Boom! Down by the Man bay. Bum, 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 apprentice. Bum. The duck walked up to the lemonade stand and he said to the man, run and say hey. Meow. Not all glad I can help. Uh, do have a pleasant day. Okay, you weirdo. Uh, okay, actually, I do need the cat. I know where that goes. Oh! Hello, Subject 3. What do you want? Um, I was just wondering about something. The scientist working on you. What? It wasn't work. It was torture. <laughs> Sorry, what I meant to say. Facility that where they kept you back then. Don't make me think about that awful place. I tried my best to block it from my memory. My best memory of that time is diving out of there and swimming my freedom. The facility must be near water. Yeah, you know, I still remember the puzzle I thought of as I swam. <laughs> Those freezing waters. Wow, that's a really spectacular multitasking. Five swimmers. Five people are talking about their swimming prowess. The second fastest swimmer is standing next to the biggest person. I made the biggest body, but I'm certainly not the fastest swimmer. I got the fanciest costume, but I'm I, I'm no match for Big B. I'm the smallest. I'll finish fourth. I'll be the about I'll be the person beside me to win. How about this? I knew it. You did your job. Oh, well, look at that. You must be one of the few humans with something between his ears. Why does it keep lagging like that? It's getting really annoying. God. It's a DS game. How is this hard to run? I don't understand. I think that must be the dark raccoon we talked about. I think you're right, Flora. Now we just have to find the coded lock. I should never come to London. I would have been better off staying on the coast. Oh, okay. But, uh... Bingo! This is the coded lock the raccoon was talking about. I ain't breaking code, let's see. A zero sum game. For each of the four squares below, there's a, there's a way to display all the numbers from nine from zero to nine. Test the four buttons A, B, C, and D to change the numbers according to the hidden set of rules. Work out the hidden rules and set all the numbers to zero. Huzzah! I am a god! I am the best puzzle solver. The That's river a was. Wonderful job, yeah, okay. Boo dum bum boo I think that did the trick. Yikes, this place is disgusting. Seems this tunnel has been neglected for some time. It's starting to leak and fall apart. So now we can get to the other side without getting one's feet thoroughly soaked. No wonder those scientists are always have wet shoes. With all the boats in the area under family supervision, crossing the river is no easy task. The tunnel is the best bet for unimpended movement between both sides of the river. Professor, Luke, wait. If we try and walk through this mess, we'll get absolutely soaked. I know it's hard, Flora, but sometimes sacrifices must be made for the sake of investigation. That's easy for you to say, Luke. You're wearing shorts. Ah, there we go. The white-clad men walking around with wet feet are in fact scientists put to work by Dimitri in his research laboratory. They walk through a partially fled tunnel under the River Thames to get into town where they want a bit of a break from the labs. See, the only one left is the mysterious woman. Alrighty. Why are you here, dude? Huh. <laughs> well, look who we have here. You! I thought this place was unguarded. You've got it all wrong, boy. I'm not on guard. I'm just having a break. It's nice and quiet down here. Now that I've seen you, I can't very well just let you waltz on past, can I? Listen, we really need to pass through. Can't you just look the other way? Huh. Headed for the research facility, are you? Okay, whatever. I'm not exactly on the clock here, after all. That doesn't mean I don't have standards. If you can't measure up, and you're... And if you can't measure up, you're out of luck. Standards? What kind of standards? You need to have solved at least 80 puzzles. We just seem to have done. You're free to go through. Aren't you worried about what will happen if people find out you let us pass? 
Huh, so what if you do pass? You won't stop the boss. No one's got the brains for that. Now he's got his eye on you. It's only a matter of time before he traps you. We'll see about that. Huh, my break's over now, and I don't imagine we'll be seeing each other again. Goodbye. Huh. Whoa. Wow, look at this. I think it's safe to say we've arrived at Dimitri's research facility. Do you mean Prime Minister is being held here, Professor? That's more than likely, which would mean the place is probably under very heavy guard. Be on the lookout for trouble, everyone. Bum, bum, bum. All right, that's where they're going to end the chapter. Of course. That's where they always end these chapters, at the big moments. That's okay, I was starting to get a little, uh, a little tired. The Time Machine Laboratory! Tori, Tori, Tori. <laughs> I don't think this is the kind of place we can stroll into through the main gate. Perhaps there's a more discreet entrance. Good idea, Professor. Might find another way in if we search this area carefully. Alrighty, guys. Well, the dramatic music is playing. But I'm going to wrap up this episode here for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. So you're going to see more sauce, sauce, game playing until the end as always. God dang, this music this music is intense. Um, I'm really enjoying this so far. Uh, the story's getting really good. We're starting to get to the final act, I feel. And uh, I can't wait to see where it goes. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. New Grace turning tomorrow. And I'll see you all next time. Peace out.